in 2023. Drake May and Nate McCullum led the Tar Heels to a big-time 31-13 win over the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. One year later, no Drake May, no Greek Rifle. Can the Tar Heels still win, this time in Minnesota? Well, guess what? We're about to find out because it's time for Carolina football. What's going on, Tar Heel Nation? My name is Nathan. That is Alan, and we are your Heel Brothers. And welcome to week one. North Carolina is heading up to Huntington Bank Arena to face off against the Minnesota Golden Gophers, man. This is about to be an exciting, exciting time for us Tar Heel fans. It's going to be a great game. And boy, do we have ourselves a matchup in week one alan how you feeling about the game coming in then let's hit this preview brother it's gonna be a close game close game this is gonna be this is gonna be a big go dog fight and everybody's predicting it as north carolina minnesota right now the point spread currently right now has been dwindling it was at two two and a half for minnesota it's worked it's all the worked all the way back down to a one point spread in favor of the golden Gophers. North Carolina is going up into an area that is going to be absolutely electric. The Big Ten arenas, they're huge. They're 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 powerful, man. There's a state fair going on right now. There's milk going on and being dispersed all throughout the masses of Minnesota right now. And North Carolina is faced with the task of a rabid crowd. See where I'm going with this? A rabid crowd, a crowd of a team that's on the way up, potentially a team that needs a little bit. Of, uh, of assistance considering they're coming off of a six and seven record courtesy of a bowl game win even though they won five games as they begin into a bowl game carolina on the road and opening games since mac brown's return since 2019 is 9 14 and one on the road since 2019 pj oh, fleck yeah. has been the head coach over there at Minnesota for quite some time now. He currently has a 50 and 34 record all time, and Minnesota is 13 and 1 in opening games inside of their stadium, which is a daunting task for the North Carolina Tar Heels. Last season, North Carolina ended with an 8 and 5 record, sitting at 6 and 0, 10 in the country. Virginia come to town and they fell all the way down to 8 and five minnesota again they finished the regular season five and seven and even though they did they were able to claim a bowl bid where they went into their bowl game and won ending with a record of six and seven currently right now minnesota is favored by one by the point spread but in espn's matchup predictor carolina has a 54 percent chance of victory against the golden gophers last season north carolina and minnesota did face off inside of keenan stadium i was at that game it was an electric event um, a lot of minnesota fans were there and north carolina powered by drake may and nate mccullum was able to grill up some gopher and end the game with a 31 to 13 victory unc returns star running back omarion hampton a guy that ran for 15 104 yards on the season last year star defensive end cayman rucker ed's rusher a transfer of the sec in max johnson a senior has been in the sec for four years has transferred to north carolina and also the star wide receiver that was able to cook up some go for last year nate mccullum minnesota brings in fcs heisman winner Max Brosmer out of the University of New Hampshire. They also return star running back Darius Taylor, who ran for 799 yards on the season as a true freshman. They also bring in star offensive lineman Arente Ursary, a guy that is evidently going to be an early draft choice predicted by many early first round and uh, is evidently a hybrid type of, uh, of offensive lineman this guy can move he is an absolute monster should absolutely see uh, some time in the nfl probably be a star uh, in the nfl as well and also their wide receiver duo in daniel jackson and cam spencer 
This is a game in which North Carolina and Minnesota are looking forward to, but also really, uh, really nervous about because these two teams mirror each other so very well. These two teams have done very similar things in the offseason, bringing in new defensive coordinators, guys that want to make their defenses more violent, trying to figure out how to balance out their offense. Minnesota with the passing game, North Carolina with the running game. And people have tried to figure out how in the world can any one of these teams beat each other because they are so, so similar. This looks to be an absolutely interesting game. And Alan, I don't know about you, but I think we are in for a dogfight in just a couple of of days alan i'm gonna throw it to you man we talked to minnesota the sky U podcast and during the scouting report in preparation for this preview tonight so we got some ideas of what's going to be happening alan i'm gonna pitch it to you tell me what you think how is this game going to go man take a breath son Went on a five-minute monologue there. Holy wanted to give. I wanted to give some stats, man. I wanted to give the stats of everything that was happening, bro. Woo! Hey, how's this game going to go? Jeez. It's finally here, I guess. It is, man. A live watch party with me and you is no better way to kick off a college football season like this. I mean, I'm just going to stick with what, what I've been saying since, you know, we started this here season preview, overview, look ahead, look you lose, dipsy doos. Um, it's going to be which quarterback can, you know, make the most plays and minimize the mistakes. Because I think you've been talking about a lot of quarterback play between the two guys. I mean, uh, you're currently right now, North Carolina has not named a starting quarterback, and uh, both teams have not named a depth chart, and neither one of them will before this game. Minnesota decided they were going to do that first, and Mac Brown followed suit right behind them. Mac Brown and P.J. Fleck know each other very, very well, but the question mm -hmm. for both teams has been quarterback play. We know we had Drake May. He's gone now. You have Connor Harrell and Max Johnson. Uh, you would think two people, especially in Max, a guy who's experienced, would have uh, – you'd, you'd easily think that he would be able to come in and run this offense no problem. Thing is, evidently, this has been a real quarterback battle. And, you know, Alan, the question is, is what are we going to see uh, with this quarterback battle? You know, Max has – or Mac, excuse me, Mac Brown has talked about how he wants to play two quarterbacks. He's saying that. Uh, I don't know if he's saying that to kind of keep things at a neutral pace, or he may even honestly really mean that. I want to get your thoughts on on that uh, and where you see the quarterback play going for both teams at this at this point. Well, I, I mean, I don't know much about the the Brosmer guy. Uh, I, don't, I don't know much about him. I ain't looking to him too much. FCS uh, Heisman uh, uh, threw for yeah. I think it was, but it. A couple it's thousand the yards. It's, it's the FCS. You know, you know, he threw for over three thousand. I think that's a yes. lot. Won the Heisman equivalent over there, but it's not the Heisman. So um, he's he's not a, he's not coming in with with a Jalen Daniels reputation or anything. I mean, so I mean, I'm sure he's good. I'm sure he's accurate. And, uh, I think he's had injury troubles throughout his thing, staying healthy for an entire season. Um, I guess we'll see what he does with uh, against uh, you know a, a team full of uh, power four, power four commits. You know he hasn't seen the speed that you know that this level bigger. They're bigger. They're faster. They're stronger. That's that's why they're division one and not division two or three or whatever it is they are down there. I'm I'm assuming division two. Um. Yeah, so, and on our side of the ball, I just think experience is going to win out. Um, Connor, you know, he's flashy. He's got all the ath athletic moves. He's fast. Um, 
I just don't know if he's consistently making the throws that he needs to make to be a starting quarterback at this point. Um, I think people are doubting how much uh, Max Johnson can actually move around in the pocket, how much escapability he has. Is he going to run a 4-4? Absolutely not. Um, but it's, do I believe that he's going to be able to like step up in the pocket, You know, get you a one or two, three yards when needed? I think he's capable of that. You know, he's somewhere between, uh, I think he's a little better a mover than, you know, say a Tom Brady and a Peyton Manning. But, you know, he's not a Patrick Mahomes or, you know, anybody like that. Somebody, you know, can get you a yard or two with that to prevent that sack. Um, and, you know, he's been in the big time environments. He, uh, he can make all the throws, I believe. Um, He's been there, done that, and this is just another situation where you need somebody that's been there, done that. And unfortunately for Connor, he just has not been there and done that to this point. Yeah, I think this is going to be an absolutely interesting game when it comes to quarterback play for both teams. Max Brosmer is a guy who's going to have to be – I mean, don't get me wrong. If you can ball, you can ball. We can definitely tell that from uh, – let's look at last year on North Carolina's team alone, Devontae Walker coming from Kent State, uh, a guy that would – you know, playing at that at, at, at Kent State and – uh, they're not going out there and, you know, knocking down eight, nine, ten wins every single year, and they have top-tier talent. Uh, they're they're a small-level school. Elijah Huzzy, another guy, uh, FCS, uh, East Tennessee State, a couple uh, last year or two years ago, uh, played, a ma- you know, just out of his mind. So Max Brosmer, he does have a lot to prove on the power four level, and you're going to see I – mean, you're going to be able to keep a good close eye on him because he's going up against Big Ten teams every single week. So that's going to be something for him – yeah, uh, to, he's going to get to his chances. Take a look at so he's he's going to get his chances. So uh, I'm not going to discount him just yet. I mean, to go out there and throw for three thousand that does say something. Uh, one thing that we have learned uh, about him, he doesn't have a strong arm. So I think that's going to go into how, and I'm going to get to the gameplay portion of this right here in just a second. But I I, I do believe that's how uh, they, they're going to do some quick passes, some quick play action passes. Um, against him, but uh, he's a guy that's extremely accurate. He is he is on the money with the football, and uh, for him to go out there and throw for three thousand, that does say something a lot to me. Uh, I, I you know I I get the FCS Heisman type comparison. Um, you know he still has to prove it at the at the power four level, but it's pretty pretty good stat line to be coming in with uh, there. On the flip side, North Carolina, you've got a super experienced four-year guy out of the SEC West, played for LSU for two years, played for Texas A&M for two years, only had only real, uh, only one bad season. That was his first season. Um, yeah. Outside of that, he's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. The biggest problem with him has been injury issues, and everybody wants to point to the fact that Max Johnson has been uh, outbid at his quarterback position in the starting job. Lost to Jalen Daniels, lost to a guy named Connor Weigman, who looks like he's going to be a high draft choice. I mean, you can't really, uh, you can't really blame the guy uh, too much. Now, the problem is, is the injury issues. Can they protect him? So, Mac Brown talks about, hey, we want to play two quarterbacks. What he said in the press conference to me when he talked about, I want to play two as the season depends, as the games need, wh- whatever we need to do to win, we will do that. So, what that tells me is. I think he's being completely honest in that point. I think he's going to go with if Max Johnson's sitting in the pocket, typically that's probably going to be what he's going to do. Now, we've been told that he's a little bit athletic, can get out of the pocket. I have saw it. He's definitely not the fastest. He's definitely not running that 4-4 like you said. Uh, but he can get out of the pocket and, and, and you know scurry a little bit. Uh, but you don't want him doing that a whole lot. He's not going to be – he's nowhere near as fast as even Drake May or Sam Howell was. Uh, Connor has him beat – by far in that in that metric but uh you know kind of depending on how the the feel of the game goes how the connection with the receivers and the chemistry which i've pointed to uh, a couple of different times in earlier videos but uh, i do believe that carolina uh, does have two very viable options here uh, at quarterback and it does offer two very different play styles so uh, whatever play style is going to get them the win i do believe we are going to see that However, I do believe Max is going to get the first bite at that apple come uh, the game at Minnesota. Uh, do you know they're I, – I personally would like – and I'm, I'm kind of predicting this uh, as a hope. I think that in the first play, throw Max and Connor both out there at the same time. Run, run, 
screw with them a little bit and see what they're going to do and uh, ha have something played up a, a little bit. Because I do believe in this game, uh, Chip Lindsey's going to get a little creative. Uh, what is the first – when we looked at South Carolina last year, Chip Lindsey comes in his first game as the offensive coordinator. What does he do? What does he bring back? The Wildcat. We hadn't saw the Wildcat in Carolina in God knows how long, and he brought that back as sort of a trick to, to play that against – uh, South Carolina. So don't be surprised if you do see something to that nature uh, in this game. Don't know what it's going to be, but I have a feeling with the two quarterback system, hey, who knows? Who knows what it's going to be? But I think Minnesota is going to play Carolina offensively uh, very much like teams like App State did. Like a lot of teams have been liking to do against this all uh, since over the past couple of years with Gene Chizik as your coordinator, where they're going to want to start playing the play action pass. They're going to run their football number one. That, that's exactly what they're going to do. Now, Darius Taylor has been uh, rumored to be having some issues. And we were talking about this right before you went on. I believe you told me that uh, currently right now he has a, uh, like two hours before the game, they're going to find out if Darius Taylor is actually going to play. Well, that's when they're, that's they're going to release the depth chart. They're going to release the depth chart. Okay. Uh, so I, I personally obviously believe that he's going to play and they're going to try and run the football first. But passing, they are going to try these short, quick play-action passes. Max Brosburn does not have a big arm. He has been talked about by that. He does not have a huge arm, so he's not going to be the guy trying to beat you downfield consistently. So uh, Gene, uh, not Gene Chizik, but Jeff Collins, on the other hand, is going to be playing. It, in, if, if his corners are playing it tight and he's trusting to leave them on the island a little bit, um, this would be a good time to do it. So, you know, because if you can get in there and break up the play action pass and consistently keep them to, to running the football and making them a one dimensional team, that gives you a better edge defensively uh, to try and get them off of the field. So uh, yeah. on the on the opposite side, the Minnesota is going to line up the box. They're going to stack that box and say, beat us, Amarian. Go ahead. Go ahead, or, or, or beat us, uh, Max Johnson, or Connor Harrell, whoever we win with, beat us, I dare you. So, honestly, I believe that this game will play very similarly to last year. I understand the change of quarterback for North Carolina. Last year with uh, Cali Agmanis, the Greek rifle for the, the quarterback for uh, Minnesota, they tried the quick play action stuff. He just couldn't hit the mark. He, he missed a lot of passes last year. So the game that we saw last season is probably going to be the same exact play style loss. It's going to be the same exact game you're going to see this season. The defenses are going to be different, different looks. I don't know that in this game coming out of it, like we said with South Carolina, and I understand the, the, the they got understood the snap count, all that good stuff. I don't believe in this game. You're going to look at the D line and saying, "Oh my God, they were able to get in there and you know get three, four sacks." I don't believe that's going to be the case because of the quick play action pass. They're going to move and get the ball out quick, but in the running game, TFLs. Are we getting it? Are we getting tackles for loss? Are we are we holding them? Are, are we getting third and favorable? You know, are we getting balls batted down? Maybe an interception or two. Are are we doing what we can in order to disrupt the pocket? Put pressure on Max to get out. He is quick. He can move. Uh, and are we doing that? I think that's going to be a gauge for this defense. And on the flip side, same exact thing for them. Are they getting balls batted down? Are they able to keep Carolina's skill positions uh, from getting loose? You have to feel like there's going to be some sort of uh, you know target on Nate McCullum just in case because that was the guy that just torched him last year. He just did whatever he wanted to do. And he's, he's had the most hype coming out of spring and fall camp. So uh, Carolina and Minnesota are going to be playing very similar games, in my opinion. You're you're really going off tonight. I mean, you're going on these three, four-minute tangents. I mean, you're, you're just throwing it out there. I mean, I agree with everything you said. I mean, except for the fact that I, I don't – I think uh, Minnesota's defensive line, they're, they're, they're not looking to bat balls down and, you know, contain – Minnesota's defensive line is going to, going to be looking for – three, four, five, six, seven, you know, sacks. I, I think that, that that's that's their game plan is is to put pressure on the uh quarterbacks. Um you know at you know that's gonna be our ours too, but realistically with that their their you know their big old offensive line might not be a realistic. Now if we do get some pressure on them, I mean if we do get if we get two or three, maybe four sacks, I I kind of like where we're where we're standing on the defensive line. 
depending yeah, that on says a lot about the line. If if it, if it's three or four from Cayman and Bo Atkinson, nah, well, I mean that's that's expected, I guess. But I mean, if you get some like uh, pressure up the middle from you know a Ritzy, a Joshua Harris, a Travis Shaw, th- those guys, okay. Did, yeah, n- if, you, now, if your nose tackles are getting in there, then 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 you're feeling good at that point. Yeah, you're like okay, you, you know, there's some there's some yeah, you can't you can't you can't get all your sack production from the edge. Mm-hmm. You you have to you know you have to clog up that middle and get pressure right at the middle because that's the fastest way to the QB. Right, um, right. But yeah, I think Brozer is going to have a hard time throwing. Maybe not the quick routes, but you know, like the you know short to intermediates. I, I just I don't you know if he's going at the wide receivers on the outside, I just think he's going to have a hard time because he hasn't. I don't think he's seen cornerbacks like Marcus Allen and Elijah Hudson. You know, they don't make many of those, and I, I don't really feel like he's went up a lot of those. You know, those dudes are smart, and you know. I just don't feel like he's seen any. I don't feel like he's seen two corners like that. So, I really believe he's going to have a lot of trouble, you know, getting the ball to his playmakers on the edge. Yeah, and the skill position, you know, has been a question for them. I know they brought in Cam Spencer uh, from Charlotte last season, and uh, he played against Carolina, and he was supposed to be like their go-to guy because he played at uh, at Charlotte the year previous to that and had like a thousand-yard season. But then last year. Didn't really live up to potential so much, and Daniel Jackson was kind of their go-to guy. Uh, and they're, they're really excited about how he's progressed throughout the offseason. Cam Spencer as well, another year into the offense. So, you know, uh, Huzzy and Marcus are going to have their hands full with them. And mm-hmm. I, I'm curious to see what the safeties are able to do. But honestly, dude, I expect Stick Lane coming in there, you know, from anywhere. You, you'll never know where he's coming from, but just coming in for these – these safety blitzes, I have a feeling that Jeff Collins is really going to dial this thing up a little bit and get after Brosman. If they're going to step back and start trying to pass down the field, get ready because I have a feeling that that Stick, uh, Jakeen, and uh, Tyrane Stewart, maybe DeAndre Boykins, we'll see how it goes, uh, comes flying in out of nowhere to try and blindside him. Um, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing that, you know, because if you get that, Maybe you get the right hit, balls knocked for a fumble, boom, maybe another mm. possession for North Carolina. Because uh, in this game, for either team, Create that chaos. The, the game is going to be won in two categories, in my opinion. Turnovers, time of possession. Time of possession was huge for North Carolina last year, right? And also penalties. I forgot my third, penalties as well. North Carolina, Kept the time of possession. They 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 controlled the ball, right? PJ Fleck loves loves getting the lead and controlling the ball as much as possible and getting the third, you know, you know, getting down to third down, getting the first down, you know, you go going through going through every single down he can outside of fourth and, and just continuing to run that clock and run that clock and run that clock. Um, North Carolina held that last year, but also had only just a couple of penalties. Last year, and evidently that's been a big point of emphasis for North Carolina this year. They've been doing different styles of uh, punishment for guys that commit penalties. They're yeah. running, you know, they're yeah. doing all these things, and players are held are holding each other accountable, which is huge. It's, it's going to be big in this game because this is a big boy game you're coming into. This is, yeah, you've talked about it on 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 the shows. Mac Brown mentioned it. This will be a la Virginia Tech 2021. You're coming in to a hornet's nest. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Atmosphere-wise, You're coming yeah. in. Team's going to be bouncy. They're going to be excited. Obviously, Carolina's going to be excited. The difference is both teams are, are underdogs on the season. You know, right? Minnesota's not expected yeah. to do much. North Carolina's not expected to do much. I think uh, the over and under for Minnesota for the year is five and a half. Carolina's a seven and a half. There you go. There's your yeah. idea. So both teams, underdogs, got something to prove. Got a bunch of changes on their on their team. They're going to be excited. It's in Minnesota. That's your hard part. So, um, you you, you got to control that uh, if you're Carolina. So time of possession, penalties, and um, uh, dang, I forgot my third one. Turnovers. Turnovers. That's going to be the biggest one. Uh, you can't turn the ball over. Can't do any of that stuff. Man, turnovers. And, you know, yeah, you, yeah. You really this. And honestly, you know, that is, I think, the biggest question mark for if you have a guy like Connor Harrell starting because 
Um, you, you, if he puts in the balls in the wrong spot, who knows what happens there? Max Johnson, when he's pressured, this offensive line, they're going to be stressed. You're going to find out. Well, you're going to find out what basically. Who's naughty and nice? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're, you're going to find out that offensive line. If they get through this game pretty good, you still don't know who they are. But if they don't get through the game well, you already know this is a bad line of scrimmage. You already know. I would say I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say if you have a poor performance this week that it's a bad line of scrimmage because this is probably going to be outside of maybe Florida State. <laughs> um, you know that That's might good. be yeah, um, NC State. No, I'm, I'm negative. Negative. Yeah, honestly, yeah. That, their, I mean, their defensive line is nothing compared size wise, talent wise, is nothing compared to FSU and what uh Minnesota's gonna bring. No, absolutely not. No. No, no. Man, they got some they got some dogs over there, dude. And sometimes that's all you need. It, it it's not talking about size, it's just talking about scheme, play style. I'm talking about all of it, man. You know, no, NC State's I, got I, some dogs over on the D line, whether we want to admit it or not. You know, for real. I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything about their defensive line. I heard their defense is take is it's worse this year than last year. They lost well, a lot of people from their defense last year. Let they they let's they did the inverse. They, they they got um, the, all the offensive players and forgot about their defense players after all the players either graduated, pretty much. Well, then that's a perfect storm for you if that stays the way it's true. You know, we'll see because they got Western Carolina to start the to start the season. But this isn't about NC State. This is about North Carolina. Alan, I'm going I'm, I'm to bring it down to you, man. Tell me how this game goes. Give me your game prediction. Then we're going to play a little game afterwards. Oh, apologize for that one. Jeez. Um, well, I mean, I think it'll just basically lay it out how the game's going to go. Uh, which quarterback makes the least amount of mistakes and is the most productive? Uh, North Carolina went. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's a coin flip. I don't. I'm going to pick North Carolina to win on a coin flip just because I'm a North Carolina fan. If I was a Minnesota fan and it was a coin flip, I'd pick Minnesota. But I'm not a Minnesota fan. Uh, so yeah, I got North Carolina winning. Score prediction. Oh, I don't know. Twenty-seven, twenty-four. All right, all right. So you got the – all right, that, that tells us what it is. Uh, I've got North Carolina uh, coming out of this game with a win. It's going to be a tight game. I think that's something that North Carolina fans are going to need to get used to this year, especially with a lot of teams that you're going to play on this schedule in the ACC in particular. Uh, close games, back-and-forth games, not a bunch of double-digit you know, wins uh, you know, to, you know, against teams. Outside of your FCS, your um, like your NC Centrals, your Charlottes, maybe your JMUs. We'll see how that goes. Uh, so I got North Carolina winning this game, twenty-four to twenty-one. So let's play a little game. And one of them, you actually already answered. Let's play a little game of over and under. This is something we're gonna be doing <laughs> on the preview and prediction show each and every game. So currently, right now, Alan, I'll, I'll, we'll both go at the same exact time. Carolina and Minnesota has an over-under uh, point differential of 50 and a half points with your score prediction. I take it you take the over? 50 and a half, that's a good number. It's 25-25 if you, if you want to go. I mean, you, you you hit it right there on the head. Mm. Yeah, I take the over. Take the over on that. I am, ooh, I mean, that's a, that's a push <coughs> level for Can't me push right a- there. You can't push 15 and a half. There's uh, no half like, points in football. Well, I understand that, but like 50 is like a good mark for me. I, I could see that, but uh, let me take the under in this game as well. Kind of goes right along with my uh, my uh, my prediction there. Uh, hey, North Carolina over and under 170 yards passing in this game. I'm 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 gonna take the over. I just I just don't know how how well they're gonna match up with the tight ends. We got yeah. some big tight ends. I I don't know how well they're gonna match up with the tight ends. And if the tight ends are a problem early, then uh, Pesor and McCollum could be a problem late. Yeah, I, I'm actually looking forward to that, and even potentially seeing uh, maybe. Maybe one of the young guys gets in there, like a Christian Hamilton gets in there as well. Maybe Paul Billups, 
maybe Chris Culliver too. You know, I, I think that they could throw different looks, but a lot, you know, tight ends are going to be a big key in this game. Hopefully nobody gets hurt, but I too, I'm, I'm going to take the over in that game, man. You know, I, North Carolina's offense was amazing the last few years. I mean, let's just call it the last five years, really. Mm -hmm. um, you have the same pieces outside of offensive line. You have the same pieces, and you insert Max Johnson or Connor Harrell. Connor Harrell's played in the system. He knows the guys. Max Johnson is an experienced quarterback. I don't think this offense is going to tell off all that much, guys. I mean, I just, I just don't. I don't believe in it. Uh, so I, too, am going to take the over. Here it is, the last one, the third and final one. 110 yards rushing for Minnesota. You taking the over or under? I'm taking the over. Taking the over on that? Darius Taylor gets loose? I don't think it takes Darius Taylor to get loose. I just 110 yards to a predominantly rushing team. you got to pound the over on that one. Yeah, I uh, they, they barely got over it last year, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think it was just they just they just got over that last year, and I too am going to take the over. That's what that's they're going to be their bread and butter. And if Carolina can cut off the passing game uh, or keep that neutralized to a degree, I believe too that uh, North Carolina uh, or, or Minnesota is going to try and run that football. They're, they're run first, and they have a couple of different backs. Not only Darius Taylor, but they have uh, a couple other backs out there that are really looking forward to seeing how they do. A couple of transfers. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how uh, that that plays out. But, yeah, I'm going to take the over as well. So the only thing we differ on is the 50 and a half. You're just over, and I'm just under uh, in this in this staff. But we'll see how that goes. We're going to keep we're kind of keep a, a track on that, see what's going on with that. And, you know, maybe we can maybe we can figure something out, maybe a reward system or, or a point system after that uh, throughout the, the season. So be sure. Join us Thursday, August 29th at, uh, I think we'll go live about 745. Sounds about good. G game starts at 8, so we'll go live about 745 or so, 7, 745. Okay. 745. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be doing a live watch party. The both of us out here, they're going to be live. Alan's coming to my house. He's coming to hang out with me, man. And I'm looking forward to it. Woo! -hoo! Yeah. And uh, we're going to have ourselves a live watch party. We're going to be having a good time. Can't wait to get you guys uh, out there and watch this game with you all. <laughs> Been a it's been a, a a long long off season. I'm ready for some flipping football, dude. What about you, bro? Three days and a wake up. Three days and a wake up from the time of this recording. We're recording this Sunday night on the what is this the 25th. So uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing how this thing goes, man. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think about North Carolina uh, going up against Minnesota up there in Huntington Bank. A stadium. It's going to be a uh, big atmosphere. And, uh, really forward to seeing how the game goes. If you guys want a little bit more on Minnesota, a little bit more information on them, be sure and go back to our scouting report video to be down in the description below. You guys can go check that out. And uh, check out the Sky U, the Sky U podcast. Man, they they had a good time. Kurt, Max, and Spencer, great guys, and they do a good uh, a good job over there. Yeah, show them some love, and um, they do a good job over there. Uh, with the Minnesota team, be sure and catch us on the post game. We got a couple new game or uh, another new thing that we're doing uh, along with the over and unders for the the pregame. We got a new thing that we're going to be doing. It goes along with the helmet stickers uh, for the post game. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Can't wait. Outside of that, brother, I think we're good. Thank you all for Get watching. That Thank you all for being here. And as always, go heels. You don't want none.